again there, YouTube. It is now 26th of January, 2013, and we are currently in the middle of winter with some snow about. Um, so I figured it was about time to do an update video on the solar. Um, as you guys can see, we still have the original 80 watt panel connected to the shed down there with a 20 watt panel on the roof giving 100 watts total for the shed itself which is uh, off grid although was originally set up or oh, sorry later set up so that any excess power would uh, go back into the grid um, I'll explain about that more a little bit later in the video and then up here on the roof we have our four 80 watt panels uh, which are purely grid tied um, now just to give you guys a bit of a catch up um, we've currently got these all set up in parallel up here um, originally we were using solar connect cables we now have these junction boxes which I put together um, which you would have seen in the previous video um, so all four panels feeding into these junction boxes and then we've got just the one set of cables going down into the garage where the grid tie inverters are. Um, now at the moment we noticed in the summer that even though we've got you know close to 400 watts worth of panels we were only ever peaking at about 200 watts of power. Now we suspect it might be because of the thickness of these wires. Effectively we have four uh, panels running through one set of wires so I think we're gonna be getting quite a bit of voltage drop so uh, a little to do for the summer is I'm gonna be replacing this with zero gauge car audio cable which whereas this is about uh, well about half a centimeter to a centimeter there's the official figure I'm going to be replacing this with zero gauge, which is easily a lot thicker than my thumb. Um, okay, um, I'm just going to take you guys down into the actual garage itself and show you uh, where that currently stands. Okay, so uh, we're now inside the garage. Uh, this may look familiar to those that have watched my previous videos, uh, but just to recap, here we have the cables coming down from the roof with the four 80 watt panels so adding up to you know just shy of 400 watts total um, and what we now have which I believe is slightly different to my previous video we now have two grid tie inverters um, feeding off the same panels so all it's done is this comes down into a disconnect switch and then from there it's just shared out in parallel to the two separate inverters um, now even though these inverters are rated for 350 watts each um, which quite frankly should cover all the panels uh, we have found that by daisy chaining two of them we do get slightly better power output um, I think that's going to be down to the efficiencies in the inverters and the fact that even though they're rated at 350 watts um, realistically you're only going to get about maybe 150 to 200 watts out of them um, you can see at the moment we're currently generating 72 73 watts um, before, when I started the video earlier this was up to about 120 watts um, when I was on the roof um, and considering we're in the middle of January and pretty much you know the height of winter um, we're not doing too badly um, so if we look at this now we are so let me just see so in the last 69 days so it's been 69 days since this meter was reset so just over two months we have made a total of uh, 16.46 kilowatts um, I will annotate the video later with what that roughly equates to but yeah, so that's uh, 16 kilowatts, you know, just over 16 kilowatts, 16,000 watts in um, just over two months. 
which considering it's been winter um, and the part of the world we live in that's not too bad um, as I say the next thing we're going to be doing when the weather gets a bit warmer is I will be replacing the cables from the roof with much much thicker cables to try and reduce voltage loss um, I have also thought about converting to a 24 volt system um, we may well do that in the summer because we're planning on doubling up on panels so we'll have a total of eight panels um, at which point these inverters are going to be replaced with something proper um, like a Xantrex or some some other high-end inverter which will take all the power we need it to um, and I may well also convert to 24 volts at that time uh, okay I'm just gonna take you guys down to the shed and uh, just give you a quick recap down there all right then YouTube we're uh, back down where it all started at the shed um, so I just thought I'd uh, give you a bit of a recap um, just any kind of updates I guess um, as you guys can see the uh, pole taking the power both to the shed and from the shed is uh, still up there um, I think it's leaned over a little bit as time's gone on but uh, still pretty solid uh, and again we still got the original 20 watt panel up there on the roof um, again still pretty solid although now it's starting to grow a bit of moss probably give it a clean when the uh, summer gets here again all right so in here um, just close the door a little bit okay um, so first of all because um, I have had a couple of questions about this um, we do now have three batteries in total um, I think I may have mentioned this in a previous video but just in case so we got this battery here which is a 70 amp hour and then we got this one down here which again I believe it's about a 70 amp hour although I'll double check on my previous video because I wrote it down there uh, and then we've got this very big battery again I can't remember the capacity off the top of my head but it is in my previous videos so if you just check that it'll uh, have it there now originally um, this was our solar battery um, and after a while it decided to die on us and for a very long time that battery was abandoned and effectively it was a bad second hand battery um, in future any second hand batteries I get I'm going to bench test because as it turned out this one was knackered um, so it spent a long time sitting under that cupboard not being used <coughs> and came very close to being traded in for scrap um, now my dad who has had some spare time has actually managed to get this battery back to life um, now the way we did that was through a mixture of fresh electrolyte and some special pills um, which affect, as far as I'm aware cleaned the plates up um, now I don't know how much capacity the battery does now have compared to when it was new I imagine it's going to be less but it is still it, it, it's now capable of holding a good voltage um, I've come home for the weekend and I wanted to just check that this battery was okay because I wasn't sure if it was still pulling down these other two good batteries um, so I disconnected it and this battery has now been disconnected and off charge for 24 hours and as you can see it's uh, it's still holding a good charge um, so uh, yeah if, you, if you're gonna buy a battery second hand make sure you bench test it first um, and if you do get unlucky enough to get a dead battery um, you know you can get these pills and electrolyte to try and bring them back I mean they're not expensive about 10 pounds um, you know it's worth a try J you know just in case you can bring it back to life um, you can see under here the battery I've just got it coming through here at the moment I've got the positive terminal disconnected it normally goes there I'll be reconnecting that later and literally all three batteries are just in parallel um, and yeah same as before they're linked to the mains inverter which gives us mains in the shed they're also linked via my watts up meter and the charge controller um, so yeah uh, if you guys have seen my previous videos effectively the power is coming in from the solar uh, it runs through the charge controller to the meter 
to the battery bank and then either to the inverter which gives us mains in the shed or to the 12 volt side of the system which is what powers this one light up here the one you see back there that's a mains light that is running off of the inverter um, the only other recent change in here is we did have um, a grid tie inverter in here um, now this what this has been set up link down here so this is where all my solar panels come into this shed so the 80 watt and the 20 watt giving 100 watts total um, normally all the power from these blocks just comes straight up into the charge controller into the battery bank and it then gets used within the shed what we then did was we've added an extra set of wires on here which come up here to this switch and we're then going to a grid tie inverter um, effectively what that meant was when the battery bank is full any excess power generated instead of being wasted it was going through a grid tie inverter and then it was going to these main sockets which these are on the grid these the only these two are on the grid um, they go up to the garage and so it meant excess power was being put back into the house as well as what's on the roof so primarily the shed is off grid but if it has excess power you know why waste that power I set it up so it would go into the grid now the reason the grid tie inverter is not here is because it failed um, as I've mentioned in a previous video they are not that reliable this will now have been the third one that has failed on us um, they've all been wired up correctly they have not had too much power run through them I mean you know they've all been w well within limits um, but this will be the third one that has died on us um, we're now going to be getting that repaired at a local electronics shop um, but yeah what I would say on those, just a word of warning, they are good. I mean, you can pick them up on eBay, I think, for about 60, 70 pounds. And when you're just getting started, if you just want a couple of solar panels, you want to have it go into your mains, you know, reduce your bills a little bit, that's fine. Um, you know, they should last a while. But just be aware, you know, you get what you pay for. That You know, they are cheap. I mean, they are, they're the cheapest inverters money can buy, as far as eBay goes. Um, sorry, didn't mean to say inverter, meant to say grid tie inverter. They're the cheapest grid tie inverters you can get on eBay. But, you know, based on that, um, from my experience, and there's a few people on YouTube who would agree, um, they're not that reliable. When they work, they work brilliantly. You know, credit where credit's due, you know, they work they do what they're supposed to do um, the ratings on them are a bit ambitious I mean 350 watts they're rated at you know I've connected m mine up to batteries at the correct voltage just to see what they actually can put out to the grid and realistically you're looking around about 200 watts thereabouts long term you know you're much better off buying the expensive grid ties um you know i i wouldn't buy the cheap ones you know if it's you know if, if i knew what i knew now um they're good to start they're just not very reliable um anyway cheers for uh watching my videos and uh any questions please feel free to ask